Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi everybody. Now, I was really aware when I did that last video about the David Bailey type portraits that maybe I wanted to kind of revisit the basic operation of optically fired uh, uh, flash slaves. Um, that's where, you know, when, when you uh, fire your camera, when you take the picture basically, the other flashes will go off. So you can see there's, there's, a, there's a flash there. Then over in the distance, over there, there's another flash. So how can you trigger them so they all go off in the same time? In the old days, you would have wires kind of going from the camera, you know, to the flash. And then you'll always, you'll find people always talking about expensive things like um, uh, wireless radio triggers, like pocket wizards, or you can buy cheaper versions and things like that. But to be honest, with um, most budget flashes now, they will always have an optical slave mode. And that's what we're going to be looking at in this little short little video to kind of explain how it works. And so basically the, the way it works is when your flash fires, your pop-up flash, or you could put, you know, a big flash on it, and a light fires out, it reaches that other flash there and that other flash over there. And then they fire at exactly the same time. How's that? Nice and simple, isn't it? And you might think, well, wait a minute. How can they fire at the same time? Well, the light's travelling at the speed of light. <laughs> and although you might think your camera, the shutter speed is pretty fast, it's not actually that fast. So any kind of teeny-weeny little delay there might be in the electronics doesn't show up in the photographs. Because remember, for most cameras, well, for most flashes, you know, the, the, the kind of the fastest speed you can do is one two hundredth, which we've got this. So that's like the basic thing. So they work off lights. So they work best inside, um, not too great outside in the sunshine, not too great in a situation where you've got lots of other flashes going off because they'll obviously trigger then as well. But there is also kind of another thing to talk about. And what that is, is the type of flash you're using to trigger the, 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 the strobes and what setting they're in. So this is a Canon 600D, typical kind of consumer DSLR, nice camera uh, with the pop-up flash on it. Now, the pop-up flash on this Canon, and probably yours if you've got, got a Canon 2, and it might well be for um, Nikon's as well, is that the pop-up flash, you cannot use it in manual mode. There is no manual option for this, for this pop-up flash. You can make it brighter, and you can make it um, uh, darker, depending on the exp flash exposure compensation you put into it, but it will always do fully automatic TTL flash. Now what that means is, although you can't see it when you take a photograph, it actually fires two flashes when you press the trigger. One flash to kind of uh, illuminate the scene, and then the camera can see how bright the scene is, and then the second main flash, um, obviously much more powerful, is the one that lights the scene. Now you don't see that, you don't see two flashes going off, um, but trust me, that's what it does. So what that means is, if we go over to this flash here, these and again, these are just um, uh, Yongnuo sort of cheap budget flashes available on eBay for not very much money at all. What it means is this flash can operate in manual mode, slave one and slave two. Manual mode is when it's on the camera and it will just be popping off. And slave one and slave two are the optical slave things. And in fact, if we have a quick look around the front, that's the pickup there, so when I'm ready I'll, I'll actually move the flash so you can see that. Now, and you'll notice that it's in Slave 2. Now Slave 2 is the ETTL mode, so what it does is, this clever little flash is, when the main flash goes off, it doesn't trigger itself on the first flash, it triggers itself on the second. It waits for that first flash to go and then fires, next, fires automatically. Uh, so that's really cool, so it knows about ETTL flashes. And the same thing would go for this Young Nuo flash over here. If I flip it round and turn it on, right, so it's in manual mode at the moment, so let's put it into slave 2. So again, what the infrared, the, the, the infrared what the little optical uh, detection is going to look out for, it's going to look out the first flash, it's not going to go off, and then it's going to trigger again. So that's how they work. And you might think, well, hang, uh, wait a minute, Rob, um, what about setting? Uh, setting the power and stuff like that. Trust me, it's very, it's really simple. All you need to do is you set your camera up, one, two hundred, it's in manual mode, white balance to flash, set your exposure to something like F8, chunk in, I don't know, say ISO 400, ISO 200, ISO 800, where, wherever you want to start. Chuck in, say, I don't know, half power or a little bit less, take a picture, see how it looks, and then adjust the flashes afterwards. Nice and simple. Now, you may say, all right, well, what's slave mode one for? Well, slave mode one is where you've got a manual flash triggering them. So, for example, what you could do is, if I, say, had this flash here, 
which although it is an ETTL light, bear with me, let's pretend that this flash is a manual flash only, so it's a budget manual flash. And I have this on top of my 600D, like so. If this was a ma manual only flash, so, so I had to adjust the power automatically, there's no ETTL or TTL where the camera is talking to this baby. When this flash fires, it would only flash once, it would go bump, and that would be at one, one, one strobe, if you like, one pop. And then what we would have to do is we would just adjust these, and we would put them in uh, slave one mode. So they would just fire as soon as, soon as, they saw, as soon as they saw a flash. So there we go, that's how optical slaves work. Oh, a final thing, obviously, what I'd have to do is turn that around so it's facing the camera and then adjust the flash head so, because you always want the detector facing towards the camera um, I, th I mean another thing actually before I finish is remember one of the advantages of using an external flash on your camera if you've got one while you use an optical slave is that you can you, you know you could fire the flash straight up so it's not uh, straight into your subject's eyes or, or anything like that so there we go that's a basic guide to how optical triggers work when they're built in to flashes so when you're looking at buying your your strobes or your flashes. You know, you can spend lots of money and get fully automatic ones with all the bells and whistles, but you know, manual flashes uh, are really good uh, for this sort of situation. And just get ones that have got an optical slave unit built into them, and sh there should be two options slave one or slave two. Slave one will probably be something like just when it fires uh, normally, and slave two means that they can work with an ETTL flash. Okay, so if you've got any of the questions or comments, put them down below. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.